Hi, I'm Claire and this is my husband Nick. We met in an online chat room in 2001 and ended up getting married in 2006. We're a fairly normal, hard-working couple who love travelling and enjoying a drink or two. In early 2020, we decided we wanted a whole new life change and challenge. So we said goodbye to our jobs. We sold our Wiltshire farmhouse we packed up our things and made the move to France. In early 2001, I went back to the UK to finalise our house sale and pick up my Arga. I was on Facebook on an Escape to the Chateau fan club page when I saw this advert. I messaged Nick the advert, curiosity got the better of him and he went and arranged a viewing. With the instructions from me, I trust your judgement, if you think I'll like it, Put in an offer. The offer was accepted and we finally got the keys on the 10th of June 2021. Join us and our dogs Merlo and Flora as we renovate our Maison de Maitre. It's been hot though hasn't it? It's been very hot and actually tonight is the last night before we are due thunderstorms i'm so excited i really am i just can't wait for it to cool down just a bit As you should know by now, I have a rather large butt and after the rain from last night, it's now brimming full of lovely fresh rainwater. We had um, oh, about 30 or 40 mil of rain I think last night in total. It was absolutely torrential but boy did we need it and boy did the plants need it so uh, happy days. That's enough for now. I don't need any more, thank you. Yeah. I'm around in this courtyard area at the front of the house again. And um, well, I started it yesterday, painting the metal work on this canopy, having cleaned it the other day. And I'm out here this morning while it's um, cool. Uh, continuing, it's quite fiddly. It'll take me a while. got the far tippity top bit up there to try to reach um, I just could do with arms about three or four inches longer than they are there the canopy is now painted well apart from that bit and that bit and that bit that I just puttied um, right once that's gone off I can just go over it with the blue um, yeah that'll look, look a lot better now I've puttied it but otherwise I'm quite happy with that good morning from a lovely cool Chagnon in Oman today we are painting the railings his lordship Mr Butcher will be doing the top and I shall be doing the bottom um, we're going to see how long this takes hopefully it's not going to rain and we'll go from there really
While I'm out here, I'm going to show you a couple of the decorative features of these gates and railings and how it's never a straightforward job painting anything over here. So all along the railings at the bottom, there are these like these little metal decorative, I don't know, what's the opposite of finial? Like ball end? That sounds bad. Um, yeah, they're like balls or claws, I don't know. But yeah, they're quite fiddly to paint. Now these are the bottom part of the gates. Um, there's obviously these which stop the gate from coming outwards. Um, we've taken off the, the decorative panels and they've gone into the shutter shop to be painted. So, I'm um, just going to give these a, a couple of coats of the Hammerite grey paint. Um, yeah, we'll see how we get on. They're completely different to the big gates that we've done previously. But the design's really nice. Um, along here, as you can see, Nick started just going over this, but there's lovely little grapes and vines and things uh, that run all the way just along here. And then they run all the way along just the top of this gate. And then up here we've got this kind of like a fleur de lis with... Um, it looks like ivy leaves to me, or it could be vine leaves. Um, there would have been three of these. So there's one here, there is one here, and there would have been one here. But for some reason, it's fallen off. It's probably because it's really old. I know, the other interesting feature about these gates is there are two pillars at either side. And as you can see from a view further back on Rue Principal with my amazing husband not being annoying today. <laughs> on the gate posts at either side, there are two metal like, urns on either side of the gates. And these are really old as well. Everything's really old. I don't think that the uh, the urns have ever been painted. And I don't know whether we're going to. We still haven't decided at the moment. That's a discussion for in a minute after we've had a nice coffee. He looks so happy. He's got his ladder there and he's about to go along and do the top finials of the gates. So you've done this side of the wash house, but what about the opposite side? I can't see it from here. Well, it still counts, even though you can't see it. <laughs> All right, I'll get on with that then. Thank you. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> so this is the end that Claire would like me to paint as I've done the other end of this laundry building. Uh, you can tell it doesn't get the brunt of the sunshine like the other end. The paint is in much, much better condition. 
not half as flaky as the other end. It will still need a sand, but a light one in comparison to what I did at the other end. So that is job number one. There, well that wasn't too difficult. Um, actually the plate paint that was there was quite flaky so it came off relatively easily. Anyway, that's all done now. Um, so, uh, first coat of the grey to go on. one coat on um, I'll leave that to dry overnight and uh, put a second one on in the morning so one side of the, the wash house it needed a B in gold etching I thought well, we can't do one side without doing the other thought to a heart Plain, simple, effective, you can see it from the road, nice and fluffy. And with the help of my electric engraver, there we go, a little while on and it's done. Time for some paint. It's quite an important morning this morning. Even with all of the heat wave and the sunny weather, we decided to be prepared this year. Our first wood delivery Ever is arriving. Let's see how this goes. How do you think that went? <laughs> well, that was the easy bit. <laughs> <laughs> bit too long to fit in our fire, though, isn't it? That, that, and just so, so now, how much was this? Three hundred. Yeah. And how? What was? What was the? Five steer. Five steer. Five steer. Yeah. Stair. Yeah. <laughs> We should be warm, even though I must say it's really yeah, enough. We live in a log cabin now, <laughs> aren't we? <laughs> so, why did I buy the logs in this length? Um, would it be really good if I bought them in the length? I'm cutting these into three. When you buy what's called a stair of wood, depending on the length, you get a different volume of wood. 
Um, so we bought five steer in a meter length. That volume cut up into 33 centimeter lengths. Um, the same volume we would have to have seven steer. So it's more economic doing it this way. Although when you factor in my time, my effort, my energy, um, I've chopped up quite a few logs already <laughs> and there's quite a lot left um, and unfortunately I'm going to have to call it a day with the chopping because the chainsaw has stopped working there's a switch mechanism and it's just not working properly so um, I'll have to take that to see a father-in-law to let him have a look at that and try and repair it so what I'm going to do now is get my car out of this garage and stack up those logs well, where my car is and then uh, they'll be under cover and out the way. Um, oh, I'm looking forward to this. Even though the chainsaw gave up, I didn't. I've stacked all the wood in here now, chopped up a bit of it. Um, as and when father-in-law repairs his tools, um, well, I might let him come and chop some up for me. If not, then I'll crack on and get more done. But there's no hurry for that. Um, winter's still a little way off yet. We've got the wood, it's undercover, knackered. I'm back out here today and it's time to do the other side of the railings compared to yesterday when I did the front side. It's now time for the back side. Yay. So I managed to get it all finished um, and right at the top is a little heart that Claire's put in. So we've got the bee at the other end and the heart up here and I think that looks quite good. This afternoon, just before I go out and paint the railings blue more, uh, I've quickly popped into the kitchen and I thought I would quickly show you how to make a delightful snack to go with your evening drink. So it's really simple. You're only going to need a couple of bits. You're going to need some cream cheese. You can use the branded version. I couldn't find any in the shop that I went to. You need cream cheese, you can have it flavoured with garlic or herbs or whatever you'd like. Some kind of traditional, traditional ham. Um, you can use Serrano ham, you can use French ham, you can use really any ham you like. And the other main thing that you will need for this is some cling film. So we're going to start by taking a piece of cling film. If you Stretch cling film out over your chopping board once and then double it back on itself. Now you've got your double layered piece of cling film. You can take your ham and lay your ham out onto here. There we go. I've now got four pieces of ham just like that on top of the cling film. And now I'm going to take my cream cheese with garlic and herbs. And I'm just going to scoop a layer out right into the middle along here there we go so i've now got my line of cream cheese in the middle and what i'm now going to do i'm going to take this and i'm going to roll it up really tightly i'm just going to take it and i'm going to take this edge where the ham is and i'm going to fold it right the way over there we go Bit of encouragement. I'm 
I'm going to tuck that end under and form it into a big ham and cheese sausage. Yes, Bello, I know that you're on the floor listening. <laughs> it's all rolled over and then I'm going to take the cling film and fold it over again. And I'm going to wrap the whole sausage into the cling film and pull it, the cling film and roll. And pull the cling film, <coughs> excuse me, pull the cling film and roll. Pull the cling film and roll. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up my sausage of ham and cheese and I'm going to take either end and I'm going to twist it. I'm going to twist it really tightly until both ends are squished and your end product looks like that. What I'm now going to do, I'm going to put it in the fridge and I'm going to leave it for a couple of hours just to chill. couple of coats of grey down and I think we're ready for the uh, enamel gold leaf paint. I think that'll do. That looks good. Another day back out here painting this railing fence post blumming thing. Ugh. Did you know that on this set of railings there are 166 downward rails and once you've painted the front of them and the back of them that comes to 332 of these things <laughs> and that's not including the ones that over there by the steps So we're just about to refit the decorative fronts onto the gates. Um, you, however... It looks like some boxing belt, doesn't it? I look like a boxer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, after that... <laughs> um, Nick, we went to Bricklar out earlier and Nick got some new bolts for the front of these which I will touch up with hammerite silver probably this evening and then it's done and it'll look better won't it but it's a bit too in your face isn't it whitey tighty lefty <laughs> 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 there are 155 of these finial points on the gates so therefore when you have done both sides there are 310 of these to paint nick and claire butcher 2022 and this is the final gate decoration ornament thing that we've got left to put up isn't it stroke boxing belt yeah <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. You're nutting in me again. <laughs> Tightening the nuts. <laughs> Eek. Eek. <laughs> it done. It's done. Yay! It's ten past six in the evening, and we've spent however many days now painting this set of railings and gates. Forty. It feels like it, doesn't and 40 it? 40 nights. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, I think we're uh, I think we're finally finished, don't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no Mr. Bit with this one. It's all done. Yeah, there, there is no Mr. Bit. And 
it's looking good, don't you think? Mm, I think we should show them. Go on, Em. Yeah. So well, here we go. One completed set of railings in Royal Brew, uh, Royal Brew. <laughs> I've had a lager in Royal Blue Britain. I don't think Royal in France. No, just blue. Yeah. And everything tipped in a wonderful hammerite grey silver. Isn't that lovely? I've left the putty that I did a uh, number of days now and it's gone off enough for me to paint over so I just touched that up and this is now finished yay Way! what a lovely canopy dear thank you very French <laughs> how many tins uh I think that one was these are only little tins, aren't they? For this. Yeah. They did make our colour in the big tins. So these were all 75 centilitre tins, which is the same as a bottle of wine. Good measure. <laughs> uh, and I think we did 12. 12 tins at 18 euros 50 of the blue. And then I think we did... One tin of hammerite. One tin of hammerite at about 30 euros. So, yeah, I think... Worth the money though. Yeah, definitely worth it. So I just got to do the stairs, the balcony, the windows. But one thing though, we've gone from a village where we have met nobody to going to everybody passing and stopping and saying <laughs> bon courage and saying how pretty it's looking and saying hello. So We've we've never seen so many people since we've lived here and we, we thought are. that everyone yeah. was just trapped indoors but we've been driving by and stopping she's been lovely anyway time for a beer a couple of hours later and i've just taken it out of the fridge i'm going to slice it with a really really sharp knife the clue is really really sharp knife Now I've cut the ends off, I'm going to make these probably about a finger's width each. And then I'm just going to very simply unwrap the cling film off. Da -da 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 -da. You don't want to feed anyone cling film. And I'm just going to pop them on a plate. And there we have it, a lovely little plate of cheese and ham apero rolls. Very nice. Let's see what Nick thinks. Hi. Hi and welcome to Wine, Wine of, of the, the Week. week. Um, We've had a really good week of just working, haven't we? A lot of hard work as per usual, yes. Yes. But they felt, those railings felt like they took forever. But they're done. Yay. Anyway, what wine do we have this week? So this week, well, midweek, we had a visit uh, with uh, Mike and Barbara, uh, Claire's mum and dad. Uh, we had them come with their neighbours for a lovely barbecue. They like they wanted a tour of the house. So uh, they left us with this rather nice wine, which is something I've never had before. A pesha. Peshamont, which is a Dordogne region wine, um, very close to Bergerac. It's a full-bodied wine and, uh, well, it's been open and breathing. We have some Apero on the table and, uh, yeah, well, I'm eager to try some. I am. 
Christmas. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. Um, welcome to all the new subscribers that we've had. If you haven't yet hey. subscribed, click the button and uh, yeah, you'll find us easily again that way. And if you've enjoyed watching, please do give us a thumbs up and a like. And you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter or on our website, which is www.theexpatbutchers.com. And I've done a big update this week on there. So if you want to go and have a look, there's a couple of recipes and a couple of blogs on there. Sorry, I wanted to fish. Oh, wow. Ooh. Well, thank you, Laurent and Natalie, for the very kind gift. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you soon, and we'll see you lot next week. See you next Sunday. Cheers. Bye. Oh, thank you, dear. Oh, no, Flora. Not for Flora's. Mmm. Mmm. Do you make them? I make them. Oh. I make everything for you, dear. <laughs>